YouTube, this is All Things Quick, back with another video. We ended the last video, I was gonna say kind of abruptly, but it was at a good spot anyways. The video would have just been way too long if we kept going, so in the last video we got the whole front end of this car off. If you didn't see that video, definitely check that out, I'll put a link right here, right now. We're gonna start by getting this AC canister out of here, so a super rusty 10 mil right there. And underneath there's a 10 mil right there. And then this thing can just pop off. Just take that sensor off here. And then this whole thing is free to come loose. And this will save for later when we reinstall the AC. But you see here, this part, I feel like I twisted it a bit too much, but we'll see. If not, I have a whole nother one that I can use in that car. And there's one behind my shed that I can use too. So real quick, before we start messing with some electrical stuff, we're gonna go and disconnect that nice new battery that we got from the auto wreckers today. We'll just pull that off, not gonna need it. The reason to pull off the battery is not in fear of getting shocked or anything like that. It's just so that you don't short anything out and blow fuses or potentially damage electrical components while you're working on this stuff. I'm going to take off this alternator terminal here. That's a 19 mil. Take this guy off. Put that back on so you don't lose it. And now we're going to take these coil packs out. This is an 8 mil nut right here. That's just the ground wire for all of your coil packs. Just remove that. Put this nut back on just so you don't lose it. They told me when I was a kid that playing operator was a waste of time. But it's really not. Every 90s kid will know what I mean. Certain nuts and bolts I like to just put back on because they're very specific or very small or very whatever. So then I just don't lose them. Now each one of these coils can just pop right out. And this actually just pops off as well. That pops off like that. Each coil can come out. And then we'll pull this whole thing back and just place it over there. What you'll have to do with this coil pack harness and the alternator wire is open this up. It opens up like that and you're going to have to pull the alternator wire out of there because that's going to come with the motor but the coil packs will not. We can separate these two and then we can toss those over in the no good pile and so then your alternator wire will go with your motor when it comes out your coil packs will stay on the side and not come out with your motor and your transmission pull the brake booster out there we go and then that also has to pop out through here because that's gonna go with the engine too just put that little guy back in tuck that back in and that's it so just shove these up on your windshield right there or something like that in the box here this is where your ecu is there's one two three and there's supposed to be four right there but there's three t20 forks i'm gonna take all three of those out and so when all three of those are out or supposed to be four but when all three or four of those are out then that cover comes off and then you have access to your ECU or in BMW terms it's DME. Real quick if this is a stock setup you have you got to take this guy out here and pop that off I used a flathead screwdriver. This guy here has to come out and then you're able to slide that aside slip this engine wiring harness through here because you're going to need to get that out after. And so off the top of my head I know that the engine wiring harness is number three on the ECU and there is another connector. This uh, I'd have to look at a wiring diagram to know exactly what that's for but it's this one here and number three on your actual ECU. So just for reference there's five there's one two three four Five, and your engine harness is the third one. So this ECU just slides out. You have to unhook this guy because it's wrapped over top, but this one as well. It's got a tab on each side and then you can pull the ECU out. I don't need it out completely. I just need it out enough to get number three out. You can see in here, these connectors, they slide this way. We need to take this guy out first, this guy out second, and then we get at the third one here. That one's your engine harness, your engine connector. So there we go. Our engine harness is disconnected from the ECU. These ones we can just leave out for now. It doesn't really matter because the car is not on and the battery is not connected. This is why you disconnect your battery so that you don't accidentally fry something. And there's one more connector way down in there that just needs to be pulled out. Everything in here is dry and clean and nice. So nothing seized up or corroded. So they're fairly easy to get out. Now that your engine harness is disconnected from your ECU, 
Y'all hear that? It sounds like trash. Don't do that to your cars. So that comes out. Put this back over top of the ECU. Just in case it rains, we don't want to get any liquids inside of there and cause corrosion in the electrical connections. And I'm even going so far as bolting this back together so that there's no chance that any liquid can accumulate in there or moisture or condensation or any of that. Here we go. That's all sealed up. I'm going to take out this little alternator cooling duct there and put that aside for later. One of the last things is this thing here for the coolant. The bottom one needs to come off because the bottom side is actually connected to the engine. The sensor in the top one can stay on. There's a hose clamp right in there. You can take that off. If anybody wants to do a heater core delete, hit me up in the comments and ask that question because this is a component that you can actually use when you get rid of your heater core to be able to delete it fully and run your system normally. So I did that off camera because it was quite a mess, but the bottom one there is off. Let that drain out kind of into the can. So this can just be put back up on the edge there. So that side's all tied up and good to go. So on this side here, there's the ground wire for your engine to the chassis and that's a 13 mil. Now, I could have used any other setup other than this raggedy double extension thing, but you know what? This is what I grabbed for some reason. All right, so underneath the car here, there is heat shield. It has a bunch of 10 mil bolts on it. Just gonna strip that down so then we can get at the drive shaft and get at this transmission mount and the motor mounts and the subframe to get this thing down and out. All right, so that is down. I think there's one more bolt at the back, maybe. Might have to get that out. Okay, just got those heat shields down. These heat shields, no good for me. So those are garbage. This one is garbage. I'm gonna go and disconnect this drive shaft here. This drive shaft has 18 mil bolts and nuts, and so you need to do one 18 mil on one side and one on the other side in order to get that off at the same time or else it just won't go. So your setup has to look like this. One goes one way, one goes the opposite way. So I just got this bolt out of this drive shaft and I have two more to go. You can see them right there and right there. I just have to spin this. You have to have your car, the wheel's not gonna rub on the ground to spin it. And so now I can do that one. Just got this last bolt out. So the drive shaft is disconnected from there, but we also need to disconnect it from that center bracket. So then when we pull the transmission in the motor out, it's not going to kink up in that spot. It's going to be able to drive down and maneuver out freely. So I just took the bolt off to this rusty old thing. This is a housing thing for the fuel filter. Just a protective thing, but it's super rusty and it's coming off. Here we go. This thing can come off now, and that's super junk. This is your fuel filter here, and your fuel pressure regulator right there. So these are 13 mil nuts. So I just got those bolts off, and essentially this thing should be able to slide right out of the yoke. Uh, yeah, there you go. Just like I thought. That can get set aside. These nuts can... <laughs> go back up in here so then they don't get lost so that's out still on the diff which is okay but now we can take those bolts off of the transmission but we have to strap up the motor and support everything before the subframe comes down okay so i'm not sure if you can even see it but right behind that at the bottom of that there's a 16 mil nut and see it poking through right there that's the motor mount there and that's the motor mount there the 16 mil we're gonna unbolt both of those have to use a really long extension a swivel joint and a six so I just got this off and I had to use a torque bar for it and it's really hot. Yeah, it's all rusted out. Almost every bolt on this car needs torque bar to get it off, man. It's crazy. So now it's time for the engine hoist. Just gonna strap up this motor just so then I can lift it up when I take the transmission bolts off and I take the subframe down, then the motor is just gonna float. So there's a T30 bolt right there and a T30 bolt right there. I'm going to take those two out so I can get that back plate off there so I can reach my hand in there. And I'm going to put the rope on that mount right there. And there's one on the back, but it's really low in the back. So that plate in the back, this thing just slides off just like the cabin air filter. Now I can actually reach my hand back in there to get that rope on there. Okay, I need to get those transmission bolts, the transmission bracket. They're 13 mil. They're pretty rusty, so we'll see how that goes actually came out that's surprising all right that's two out of four hopefully these ones are nice too see man these things are so rusty 
budge. And that's your transmission bracket down. Oh, only a little bit more to go. So the engine just needs to be jacked up a little bit. And then we need to take off that subframe from the chassis with the control arms. So this is all strapped up. It's not very conventional, but it's going to jack it up just a little bit. Just to pull some tension. Just enough that it just lifts the chassis up. I need that motor completely supported by the time I go to pull this thing out. Okay, here's the control arms. 16 mil. That's one bolt out. So that's good news came out very easy what in the world nice okay so here's a subframe bolt okay that's it that was easy awesome if things keep going this easy then i'm gonna be going home soon because this is good news okay this is the passenger side control arm nice that one was easy too this is good news That one's tough. There it goes. Oh, it's so close. Why is it like that? So that's a very strange design right there. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Very odd. Very, very odd. Anyways, we'll try to get this one right here. See how that goes. Okay. It's the stupidity that's sticking around. That shifted my whole dang car. Flip. Shoo-wee. That was scary, buddy. Wow. That shifted the whole car. That's why you always use jack stands, and that's why you strap in the motor first. Legit, because I could have died there if I didn't have all that. That's crazy. Okay, so that should be loose enough to do something with. Yeah, so I completely forgot that this was a 330XI and not a 330i. So the subframe in here is connected to the axles. Yeah, because it's all-wheel drive. Of course it is. So that subframe wants to come out with that motor and that transmission. And for right now, that's not happening because I'm exhausted. I've been working working at this all day so for now I'm just gonna leave that it's gonna be a to be continued thing and we'll get back at you first thing in the morning and we're back the next day so i thought about this overnight last night it got really late and dark so i just figured i'd come back to it today i've never actually done an xi before so uh, i was just taking a look over at this and i think that what i'll have to go and disconnect the axles from the actual motor bolt there bolt there there's four on each and i think i have to disconnect that to be able to lift this up and out of the engine bay but before i get into all that i'm just going to disconnect this shift linkage before i break the things for the auto shift link and i'm bolt that 13 mil and those two 10 mils there. So that's disconnected there. Probably should have put a jack or something underneath that. Just gotta take that piece off there. Now that I got a jack under here, this thing can just slide off. There we go, now that shift linkage is off. So it's not gonna break, that's good news. Give that to the next guy. Just gonna get at this axle right here. I'm gonna take these bolts off, 13 mil. Okay, so that's unbolted. So that's ready to come out now. So I just got these bolts out on the transfer case on the motor here on the other side. So there's four bolts there and I had to take them out by hand just because they're really tough to get without an extension and everything. So, so on the driver's side, those are all 5 8 bolts and on the passenger side, they're all 13 mil. So I'm going to go through this super quick because I think that I did a lot more than I needed to do. I took off the control arms on both sides. There are two bolts right there, two bolts right there. So the same thing on the other side and I actually disconnected the CV shaft which I don't think I needed to and I think that I actually broke the other side but this is okay because we're getting new ones for these anyways the guy that sold me this was telling me that it was trash when he had it so I'll be replacing that anyways but it kind of sucks like that whole thing ripped apart in there and then I disconnected the sway bar in the front because that's what was holding it on and making it pivot around that the only thing connected to the subframe now is the steering column so now it seems that the motor is able to lift out somewhat freely without subframe on it Except for the torque converter on this side, I'm still struggling with that. Also, I broke my camera mount too, so I'm using my hands now. Okay, so I actually will be the first to admit that I don't know how to do this, but I ended up taking out the CV shafts from both sides. I disconnected the steering column right there. I think I'll actually be able to get this motor out now, and since I took so much apart, I think I'm just going to clean everything up like afterwards. Maybe repaint some things and grind it all down and stuff, so I'm going to try to pull this out now.
I have that fuel line that needs to come out, and that's the only thing that's holding this thing back. I just bent the crap out of that power steering line, so good thing we have a parts car so we can use the other one from that car. Well, there it is. Motor and the transmission is out. That didn't come out like I wanted it to at all. Like, not even a little bit. So, yeah, I think that this axle's broke. I think, honestly, that was broken before I even got in there. This axle's still good, it seems. I might be able to just plug that thing back in. The transmission's no good for me. I'm gonna sell that to somebody who needs an automatic. The motor, I'm gonna have to tear that down piece by piece. This, I'm gonna put back together. I'm gonna put it back together so then I can put some wheels on it and be able to roll it so it's not staying in the the driveway here so I'm actually gonna end the video right here once you guys see how long this video is you'll understand why I'm ending the video here so with that being said in the next video we're just gonna get this all cleaned up I'm gonna get this subframe and steering column and the control arms and all that stuff back on so that we can put some wheels on this and we can roll that car back into its spot we're also gonna get this transmission off and get the transfer case all sorted out on this thing and disconnect the stuff that we have to disconnect off of here and get that motor set aside so that we can start tearing it down and getting it down to the block so then we can do some fun stuff with that once we get this thing down to the block then we can send it off to a machine shop to have it bored and honed and get the head stud threads drilled and tapped and a whole bunch of other stuff with this motor so definitely stay tuned if you haven't subscribed to this series and to this channel definitely hit the subscribe button and if you are into this kind of stuff we also have a discord server so make sure you check that out link in the description it's a community of people who like to build cars and who like to modify their cars as well don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you like this video or if this helped you out in any kind of way and also don't forget to share this video with a friend and get them interested in this build this is going to be a whole series on building this engine and building this car so definitely stay tuned for that we'll see you in the next one see you later